Hey mechanics friends, uh, in this lab we're going to be testing the concrete cylinders that you constructed 28 days ago now. Uh, just as a reminder, our uh, test specimens will meet the specifications of ASTM C39, which is the standard test method for compressive strength of cylindrical concrete specimens. Uh, so this video is just going to give you an overview of what to expect in this lab. All right, in this lab, uh, here is our required safety attire. So I'm requiring you to wear closed-toed shoes, safety glasses, and uh, gloves are optional if you would like to have them for handling the specimens. Uh, the closed-toed shoes is mainly just uh, this concrete, right? If you drop it, uh, we don't want to drop it onto our feet. Uh, you don't really want to drop the concrete ever, um, so just be careful of your toes. Also, uh, if we wear flip-flops or things like that, we're more uh, prone to tripping hazards and we'll have kind of air hoses and different stuff uh, on the floor in this lab, so uh, please wear your closed-toed shoes. Uh, the other one is safety glasses, so please wear these at all times in the lab. Uh, the most important time is when we are uh, demolding the specimens. So the easiest way to demold the specimen is to drill a little hole in the bottom of your cylinder and we use the compressed air hose to kind of pop it out of the cylinder. Uh, when we do that, bits of concrete will go flying and uh, it's very easy to get it in your eye. So I definitely recommend uh, having the safety glasses on during that stage and then of course as we test them, uh, if they're high strength, they could explode. Uh, we have the possibility of getting fragments in our eyes at that point. So um, at all times in this lab, please have your safety glasses on. All right, so the first step in this lab is to go and get our concrete specimens. So as you know, we put them in the moist curing room. So they've been in here. Uh, so that is our first step. So let's go see what we can find. Alright, so it seems like we found some samples. Uh, go ahead and get your samples. You need both the 4x8 cylinder and the 6x12 cylinder. And as you come in and out of this room, just be careful. Our floor will get pretty wet and our floor is pretty uh, smooth. So it's going to get a little bit slippery right here. So just be a little bit careful as you come in and out. Alright, so there's no super secret to getting the, these uh, concrete cylinders out of their mold. Um, basically, just any way that you can get them out, right? You just it's not like there's a highly specialized technique. Um, I've learned that the easiest way is to, to drill a hole in the bottom. Uh, so you drill a hole in the bottom and then uh, you can put compressed air and because we use some form oil that should release the cylinder and the mold should come up. Uh, so let's go ahead and give that a try. Make sure you have your glasses on. There we go. So just like that, we got it unmolded and now you have your cylinder. Your cylinder is ready to test. So go ahead, uh, you'll need to get this done for at least one of your 4x8 samples and one of your 6x12 samples. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to set up a typical uh, compression test with the cylinders. Um, so for the 4x8 cylinders, uh, when we set up our machine, we're going to need to make sure this hefty steel block is in place. Um, and so we just get that in place, uh, otherwise we're not going to have enough play with our hydraulic cylinder to crush our cylinder. Uh, to get our uh, actual specimens situated, uh, we're going to take our specimens and we're going to put them inside these steel rings. Uh, we're going to do what's called an unbonded test. So basically it just means that these steel rings uh, are not bonded to the concrete. So we just have like an elastomeric bearing pad in here uh, that's going to kind of fit over the concrete as we compress, kind of lock the cylinder in place. So we're just going to get this situated. Uh, you need to get both of them on and you have to hold the whole specimen with the, thing, with the caps on there as you go to put it in the machine. Um, otherwise you won't have enough room to get it in there. Now before we're ready to test, we want to make sure that the top uh, crosshead is all in the fully retracted position and I'll show you how to do that in a second. 
Um, and then we want to make sure our cylinder is in there as straight as we possibly can. Uh, we, if we don't want to put it in there crooked, otherwise it'll cause like a bending moment in our machine and could cause damage to our machine. Uh, so basically, all of these circular pieces should be concentric. So I'm just going to work to get them all concentric uh, the best that I can. Making sure the cylinder is concentric in the rings, the rings are on, everything's nice and flat. Now we're ready to get started on the test. Alright, so now we're ready to go ahead and test. Uh, to test we have to of course have the pump on, so we're going to turn that on now and it might get a little bit loud, so we'll see uh, if you'll still be able to hear me. All right, now that we're ready, uh, I want to point out the, the uh, operation for the hydraulic pump. Uh, we have a few, four different positions to talk about. We have retract, hold, metered advance, and full advance. So in the retract mode, that's going to fully retract the hydraulic cylinder so that we have all the maximum amount of room. So uh, we'll need to do retract at the end of our test. Hold, it just stays steady. Nothing will happen. Uh, no hydraulic oil is being pumped. Metered advance allows us to control the amount of hydraulic fluid that's being pumped. So that's what we're going to use in our test. We're going to use metered advance. So it's important that before we start the test, we make sure that our valve is completely closed. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So all the way clockwise until it's tight uh, so that we know that it's shut. So when we move it to meter advance, initially nothing will happen because the valve is closed. Full advance is going to be to cover large gaps. So right at the beginning, we have a pretty large gap between the top and our plate. So we're going to maybe use full advance to get started and then we'll flip to metered advance to run the test. Now at any point in time if you feel like something bad is happening, there's a red button on top of this pump. Just go ahead and hit that bump button. It'll automatically kill the power to the pump. All the hydraulic fluid pressure will be released uh, and so that's our kind of emergency. What to do? Hit this button and you won't hurt a thing. Alright, so now we're ready to run the test. Uh, to take accurate data, we're going to use this. This has a feature. It's meant to do compression tests for concrete. So we're going to pick the shape. It's a cylinder. Uh, and we're going to pick the uh, 8x4 cylinder. It's the cylinder that we have, 8 inches tall, 4 inch diameter. And uh, it has the loading rate. It tells us the loading rate is 440 pounds. Uh, Per, per second of load. Uh, we're just going to hit OK and we get started. Initially we're going to have a number here. I'm going to hit the zero button to zero our load uh, because right now we have no And that is where my mic cut out. So I'll try to give you an overview for the rest of this lab, kind of voicing over the video. Um, so we can see that basically we're going to use full advance till we get in contact with the cylinder, once we see a little bit of load show up, we're then going to move it to metered advance and be able to control uh, the pressure, the amount of load by the valve. Now, as we're testing, we don't want to have our hands anywhere near the machine. So, uh, the machine's capable of producing very high loads and it won't care if your fingers are stuck in there. So, just keep them clear. Uh, we'll operate uh, probably with just one hand so that we know what's going on and we have just control with the one hand. We'll keep the other hand separate and uh, we'll get started. So we'll move it to full advance until we make contact. Then we'll flip it to metered advance. We have the valve closed right now so no pressure is being added uh, and we'll be ready to use that valve to control the amount of pressure for the test. I'll go ahead and shut the door and we're ready to run the test. Now we're going to open the valve to allow the hydraulic cylinder to move to start compressing our specimen. 
Uh, the valve has different numbers on it. So each uh, notch on the valve is numbered one through six. So I'm gonna follow this number one and I'm gonna take it from what to me is the 12 o'clock position and we're gonna rotate it one and a half turns. Uh, and so we can use the numbers on the valve stem to keep track of how much we open the valve. All right, now as we do this, we wanna control the load speed and we're going to see the load speed on the screen. So you can see at the bottom there, it says that the load is, should be 440 pounds per second. So right now I'm loading a little bit fast. So I'll close the valve in order to bring that closer to uh, the middle. And you'll see those two lines, those two carrots in the middle, those are indicating that's where I want to be for the load speed for this uh, four by eight cylinder test. Now for the purposes of this video, I did speed the clip up, so uh, we, it does seem like we're testing a lot faster, but we're not. And now the cylinder has broke. So once it breaks, uh, the machine will automatically detect failure and it'll stop loading and it'll report the value at the top. So we can see that this cylinder held 79,700 pounds of force. All right, now we have to get the cylinder out I like to first make sure I close my valve so that the next time I go to test, I'm ready so I know that it's completely shut. I'll move the lever to the retract position and this will retract the hydraulic cylinder. Just be careful during this stage as the cylinder, uh, the rings on the cylinder could possibly fall out on you and you can see as the cylinder starts to crumble, uh, you want to be careful that pieces don't fall onto your feet, especially those giant steel rings. Take it out with two hands um, and just set it down. Now the last thing to do is to take a look at the results from the test. So if we look at ASTM C39, they indicate that there's six different types of failure. So we want to look at the failure pattern for our particular cylinder. So the ideal failure pattern is type one, which we call like the double cone failure. Uh, and then we have the other ones, which you can read about in the specification. I'm gonna take a look at the sample we just tested. Uh, you can see the sample we just tested has some vertical cracking. Uh, so it cracked downwards through the top and then all the way down to the base. You can even see that even in the base, we have some vertical cracking. So if I was looking at my specification, I would say that this would be a type three failure because we had cracks all the way through. Uh, this cylinder was from a previous test. You can see again, vertical cracking through both the top and the bottom surfaces. So this would also classify as a type three. You can see that it maybe tried to go on an angle, so it starts to create a cone shape. So it might be heading towards maybe like a type two, but we see that uh, because we have cracking all the way through the top and bottom, it would be type three. This cylinder, we see it cracked kind of vertically and then started to go on an angle. So this might be more similar to like a type two failure. We can see that the bottom there, we're starting to get that kind of cone type failure uh, and it sheared out the side. We just don't have a really well deformed cone for this particular specimen. Lastly, another common one that happens is cracking at the top. So this would be what we would consider, I would say type five cracking. So basically at the very top of your cylinder, uh, if it's not perfectly flat when you put those rings on there, it has the possibility to shear off kind of on the side there you can see that little bit and then that's enough to uh, cause the cylinder to fail in our compression tests. So these are just a few samples of how we determine the crack pattern. So for your specimen that fails when we do our lab test, I'll be expecting you to classify it as one of these six uh, types of failures. All right, so this video just basically gave us an overview of the lab for com testing the compression strength of our cylinders. So I hope you have found it enlightening and uh, you're excited, I hope, to get to test your cylinders. 
Uh, so we're going to come to the lab, and I'm looking forward to running these tests with you. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will be seeing you soon.